Oh my god. Mm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. But it turned out like this. <laughs> Stop. You gotta pay the seagull tax. We just can't get enough of the Netherlands. And we are back for more Dutch food in a new city. This is both of our first times in Rotterdam, the second largest city in the Netherlands, and the largest seaport in Europe. Let's make our way to the first stop in this Dutch street food tour. All right, so first stop on this street food tour, we walk by this stall and there's a bunch of fresh potatoes, deep fried potatoes. It's called Poms, which I think translates to fries because in German it's Pommes. And it's this stall that sells fries, Dutch style, as well as some other things we get to in a minute. Apparently the difference between these Dutch fries and Belgian fries is that these are cut a little thinner. Belgian fries traditionally cut a little thicker. Also, they use Dutch potatoes. So she says <laughs> Dutch fries, not Belgian fries. <laughs> also, I love this contraption here, the separate it. It's very cool. This is called Orlong sauce, right? Yes. And this is apparently a peanut sauce right here. And then on this other side, we have a spicy mayo and then it's topped with onions. Yes. So I'm just gonna go in here. Some of the peanut sauce. Oh my God. I think a couple days ago, I just told Deanna how I liked peanut sauce on my Asian food back in the day. This brings bad memories, man. This tastes so good. It's a very thick sauce. It's pretty dark and it's pretty strong. Um, you don't really taste the onions because the peanut flavor is so strong. Mm. The fries are nice as well. They are skin on, they are fried perfectly and they are seasoned a little more than they look. It has a lot of salt on it and overall very nice fries, very fresh. But let me try the the mayo side yet. Look at that. Spicy mayo. Mm. Wow, the sauces are very contradicting. Very different flavor profile. I just love fries, man. It's so good. I'm so hungry behind here also. So is that giant seagull that's been stalking us. Moin. What I also like is you get it in these cones. It makes you feel a little bit more like a child it's again. It's street food, right? I love it. Okay, you see that big whopper back there? He's he just waiting. He is stalking. He is waiting for someone to drop a fry. I don't think I've ever had this peanut sauce before. Me I neither. think it's one of the specialties we asked them, so I'll just try it with both of it on there. Mmm. I thought it would be sweeter. It's slightly sweet, but pretty savory still. Oh, that's nice. Moin, 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 moin. Might. My enough about these fries. Just gonna set them down here. What we really came here for are bitterballen. These are something I craved. We had it in Eindhoven and Amsterdam for the first times, and they were so good. We got three different kinds here. We have a cheese, we have the traditional beef, and then we have a shrimp one in here. And uh, I'm not really 100% sure which one is in each one. I'm just gonna rip one apart here for you. Cool. This I think is the classic beef. Yeah, you can see the beef in there. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. This one is much more herbal than the other ones we've had before. I don't know how to describe it. It tastes like a beef stew in a ball. Beef for me. Mmm. Like the deep fried gravy sauce. Amazing. And then we have this one, which let's see what it is. Open up. It's a different shape. Ooh, it looks like the cheese. I think this is the cast bit of ball. I learned from the comments last time, one bitter ball, two bitter ballin, because I was calling them all bitter ballin. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. Just fried cheese is my stuff. Very smooth and liquid, a little different than the cast souffle, but also very kind of similar. Better than the beef one? I don't know about better. <laughs> oh. The cheese is so soft, almost fluid. And then I'm guessing this one is the shrimp. Just open it up. Oh, look at that. Shrimp? You see little shrimps in there, see that? No. That's a little oh, brown yeah. shrimp. Look at that. It smells interesting. I think shrimp is garnel. Garnel? Oh yeah, garnel. In Dutch, I'm not sure. Mmm. Dude, it tastes so similar to like a, a Chinese dim sum or something. You know, cause you get a lot of these like shrimp paste things and dumplings, yeah. but this is like with the breaded fried version of it. Wow. Good? Yeah, that's Which really good. Best? I think this one might be my favorite. Really? Yeah. I like this part, you feed me. <laughs> mm. 
Oh yeah. I expected there to be like one shrimp in like the ball, like a shrimp dumpling or something, but it's this paste still. It's yeah. like, it's almost like a mix between the cheese and the gravy one and then shrimp flavor as well. Yeah. Nice. That's so good. So for the bitter ball pack of six was like around six to seven euros. And then this one was also, I think around five euros with yeah, the sauce. Yeah, something. Four something. So a great price license for this. I don't know what that is in Dutch. If you know, let me know. Do, they, <laughs> do you have a price performance ratio word? But this is mm, great start. Finishing up our fries and running away from giant seagulls, we make our way to the next stop on this Dutch street food tour, which brings us underground for a sweet treat after those savory and salty snacks. Our next street food stack is something I've been eyeballing for a while. We went to this place called Benicio's Cheat Day, and you can choose your things in three easy steps, a nice cheat meal. We started with these puffritches. Oh my God, I'm butchering all of this Dutch right now. Puffridges. Yeah, puffridges. Puffridges. They're mini pancakes, but you got to choose toppings. Classic is with powdered sugar and butter, but we loaded Nutella, strawberries, and banana on top because it's a cheat day, so we're putting everything on it. The restaurant's called Cheat Day. We're doing that. Yes, so this meal was 14.10 total. The banana and the strawberries each were 250, so five euros for the amount of banana and strawberries here. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, that's 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 a little steep for me. Uh, you get two strawberries for 250. Yeah, I want to mention that, that the pricing was a little weird. They said the Pofatis bowl is 650 and then mixed fruit 250. I'm like, okay, it's gonna be like nine. He's like, banana, strawberry, I'm like, can I mix it? He's like, yeah, of course you can. But then they cost extra because I think a little bit more than 40 euros, that's pretty steep. So yeah. if you're Dutch, let us know if we just really overpaid for some Pofatis. Either way, I'm really excited about these pancakes. Yeah. They're tiny, they're spongy. I think they're but we bake. He had this cool little contraption where he just put the batter in, cooked them in there. Looked a little bit like takoyaki. Yeah, it looks a little bit like that. Oh, first time puffer chess. Mm. I see your reaction. Excuse me. Now you can see it. They're like just mini pancakes. So what I mean by that is they just got an extra fry to a normal sized pancake, you know? That doesn't sound bad. Like an American style pancake because it puffs up a little more than um, the German one I'm used to. But you see how it's like nicely fried on all edges then, but. Mm. Mm. By the way, we went down to this harbor area. Check this out. There's something like a, first I thought it's a warship, but it looks, I don't know, it's some, some ship. What gives us shade is this nice little train thing. Very cool area. This is made for walking through and that's pretty cool. I also never had puffages, I think. It's my first time. I'm just gonna get some strawberry and banana on one. Ooh, look at this one. How nice that looks. Mm, mm, mm. Put it on there. Mm. Okay, I know what you mean with small pancakes. They literally taste more like the American pancakes than the German ones, right? In small version. It's really nice with these toppings. I think they're pretty good with the toppings, without it. I don't know. It's okay. Just another fluffy, small pancake thing. <laughs> Which is my thing. Fluffy, small pancakes are my thing and I happily finished off this sweet treat. Before our next stop, Phil also wanted a sweet snack, so we popped into a supermarket. I was very impressed with some of the different products, and if you're interested in the extra footage from Rotterdam, we'll post a video on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Phil. Now, back to Phil's sweet snack. One thing I had to do, we ran into a little supermarket because the first time we went to the Netherlands, to Amsterdam, we tried this Vla, and if you haven't seen the video, I love this stuff, man. It's so good. It comes in a little Tetra pack. They also have a bigger one, like two liters or something. And it's just a pretty fluid pudding, I think. I, are you supposed to drink it? I know it comes Dude, in that it comes container. In, it's a drinking container, so you're supposed to drink it, right? It feels like it should be on top of ice cream or something, or cake. Okay, like in the first video, I try to waterfall it, right? Oh, see how fluid that is? I can't tell if it's a pudding or if it's a drink. But it's freaking awesome. It's vanilla taste and uh, I love it, man. It's, uh, oh my God, I love it. It's good, of la. Uh, Miniso is in the Netherlands. They all closed in Germany, but we have this one. Look how cute. Mine. Oh. He's already attached to me. It's true. As an American who grew up in the USA, I think this is amazing how bikeable it already was in Germany. And then I think the Netherlands brought it to a whole new level. There's full bike lanes, then you have the train, and then you have the cars. I love how the bikes and the cars are separated. Because in Germany, sometimes I get a little stressed riding right beside the, the car lane. This is like, this is where it needs to go in the future. Like, what, I feel like this is amazing. Yeah, I think so too. I also think Rotterdam so far has the best looking McDonald's's. 
that I've seen so far. Very glassy buildings, I mean, a lot like Apple stores. They're, they're at every uh, metro station, am I, am I right? Oh, <laughs> am I, right? yeah, yeah. I need to stop with that joke. <laughs> Common sight at Imbus stands here in the Netherlands are these huge seagulls on top you of it. You gotta pay the seagull tax. This is like the third stall we saw where they're just sitting on and I think they're just waiting for somebody to drop their fries or walk away. They're Not massive here, attention. they're huge. It's like, a, I already made the comment that I think Dutch people are the tallest in the world, I think on average. They are just eating all the cheese, drinking all the milk, but the seagulls, those are also pretty da, da, da. massive. There's one in comparison. We narrowly escape the giant fry thirsty seagulls and continue down the path in our quest for Dutch street food, leading us to a familiar sight. Okay, we can't do a street food video in the Netherlands without going to one of these vending machine places. You see behind me, this is wall of vending machines. However, it's pretty late already and it's pretty empty. So we're not pulling it out of the vending machine. We're gonna order at the counter. It's like a little torpedo. Choo. We just got two things to try quickly. This is a Kaffles Croquette, meaning a Kalbfleisch Croquette, a veal croquette. Croquette, okay, three languages you got there. There's meat in there, it's veal, apparently. And he just got out of the fryer, it's pretty hot. Um, uh, it looks funny, it's like just this little like sausage thing. What do you mean it looks funny, it looks familiar. It looks familiar, yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, let me just break it up here. Ah, it's so hot. Oh. Oh, oh it's min minced up too. Yeah, I think all of these deep fried things are minced up flavors. Like the shrimp is minced up, the veal seems to be minced up. Let's see, it's super hot. Oh my God. <laughs> I think oh. it's super hot. <laughs> it's mm. hot. Surprise, it's hot. <laughs> it's so hot, but again, it's, it tastes awesome. It tastes very much like the bitter ballon that we had before. Like a thick gravy that is just boiling temperature and then deep fried and very crispy. Listen to this. Wow, ASMR. So I, of course, had to get a cast souffle. It, it gives me like grilled cheese vibes, like fried cheese is just amazing. So that's every time we come to the Netherlands, I always end up getting one. Let's see this cheese bowl. Oh no. It's still very warm to the touch, but I didn't get a good cheese bowl. There we go. Okay, it looked horrible last time, but it was amazing. But it tasted so really good. See. It's fried battered cheese. What more could you want? It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Honestly, we've had a lot of fried food in general today, so I do feel a little rough, but it's worth it. Tastes so good. I have not reached that limit yet. I can still go, but I will finish this Duffley's croquette. Yes. And uh, afterwards, I'll, I'll eat more fried stuff. <laughs> By the way, it's very common at these places too that you can get some kind of snack burger. They have a beef burger and a chicken burger, and you can usually also pull these out of the wall. I like the word for chicken in Dutch. Kip, 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 kip. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it sounds so cute. Kip, I want a kip burger. With the fried food getting to our heads, we walk it off the rest of the evening, checking out more of the city. And we start fresh the next morning in desperate need of coffee. So far, Rotterdam does not disappoint. I really like the Dutch food. I really, really like the Dutch vibe here. And if you like these kinds of street food videos in general, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more food videos every week. For the next stop, we went to this place called Jordi's Bakery. And I have to say the bakeries here look absolutely amazing. That one looked beautiful. The interior is beautiful. The stuff they had, beautiful. They had brownies, they had cookies. They had different types of pastries. And we got a cappuccino. And I don't know if it's the Netherlands that make me feel bigger. Or this cappuccino definitely <laughs> feels very small. It's a small because, cappuccino. Yeah, look how small that is. It's cute. You look they, like a giant. And they gave this piece of... Uh, banana bread. Is it banana bread? Yeah, it's banana but, walnut bread. But there's something in it which looks like meat. I don't know what it is. It came on top of my petite cappuccino. Wow, I will never know. I can't tell what it is. I don't know what the darker part was. Okay. But yeah, that's a cute cappuccino. Wanna, oh, oh, okay. I didn't know if you wanted to open to see it too late. Sushi bait. Very good, with oat milk. Tastes very strong and makes you feel your... like a giant. We got two things. I'm going to do this one. Phil's gonna do the other one. So this is something when I Googled Dutch food, constantly popped up. It's this. It's a Socian Brugge. I don't know if I pronounced that right. <laughs> they have the Y with the two dots. That's very difficult for me to pronounce. So it's this beautiful puff pastry with this sausage inside. It's 
I believe beef is what they said. I think there are variations all throughout Europe, but I like this puff pastry. I'll give it a try. Mmm. The puff pastry melts in your mouth. It's just like flakes that just fall apart. But the meat itself is so soft and so tender and also very like flavorful, very peppery seasoned. They heated this up for us. This is great. Ooh, this is surprisingly good. Mm. The Saucyan brocha, I think that's how it's pronounced. Man, look at the floor. I know, the pigeons are gonna come. This uh, puff pastry is so spilling always. Yeah, so messy. It almost tastes like a little meatball. It's uh, minced meat and it's super herbal. But we also asked him what is another very Dutch thing, and she said this one. This is just called a worst brocha, and I think it just translates to sausage roll. And you see it's this wiener in there, and I just tried to rip it open, but it turned out like this. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> like, what is that thing? I wish there was some kind of sauce in there with it, but it looks like it's not, like... Don't pull him out, right, leave him in the feels, bun. This feels very wrong. <laughs> I think you're supposed to eat it with the... Oh, yonga, mm. yonga. It's a cheese sausage. Ooh, ooh, that is nice. So that is pork, she said that was pork. That is definitely pork. It's pretty juicy because of the cheese in there. And to be honest, I like most pork sausages better if they have the cheese in there than just the regular ones. It's not like a bratwurst, it's more like a wiener, but a very rough one. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> also, I like this type of bread slightly better than the pastry, the yeah. puff pastry. Okay, don't eat the whole sausage. I would like some of that. So yeah, I think uh, both things were pretty good. Which one mm. would you like better? That cheese in there is so good. They're very different. I wish there was a little bit of like... But I like the meat of this one. I just, yeah. I don't think I love the how puffy the pastry is, how like it yeah. pulls apart so much. Tough call, but both yeah. are very good. And if you want to feel like a giant... Get a cappuccino. <laughs> get a cappuccino. <laughs> With caffeine in our systems, it's time to go to our last stop on the street food tour. So this next stop is going to be this giant market hall. It's beautiful. It's this nice round building with two glass walls. So there's a lot of light in there. There's a lot of street food. We're gonna go and check it out. Let's go. This market hall was so beautiful. The glass on two sides of the building gave wonderful light and brightness to the epic painting all around. And there were lots of street food options. From East Asian cuisine to Middle Eastern options, there were standard Dutch herring sandwiches as well. Honestly, there were so many options to choose from and our last meal did not disappoint. So one thing that I noticed about this market hall, it's fairly tight and there's a billion stalls, but they do a good job of offering seating for everybody. They have these little nooks like there in the background and uh, a lot of these stalls have a second floor with seating on top, which is kind of cool. So you can have a little bit of calm and quiet as well. And it's not just all busy, very accessible, but yeah, might be a little touristy. For the Americans, they have Dunkin's and they have TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. It's TGI Friday. We say TGI Friday in America. TGI Friday. <laughs> so we're at this Market Hall Street Market. It's just a giant, beautiful building, and there's so many international cuisines. I've seen Greek, I've seen Chinese, we've seen yeah, Turkish, Italian, Italian. Italian spices. You can get your cheese here to take away. There are supermarkets in there. So yeah. a lot of different things, something for everybody, it seems like. Yeah, and Indonesian food as well. And today we are at this place called the Satay Lounge and we decided to get Kip Satay, which is chicken satay skewers. Come in this little boat. We've got the peanut with spicy sauce on it. Yeah, peanut sauce, also very common very in the Netherlands, <laughs> I noticed again. There we go, let's try it. Mm. Dude, it really brings me back this peanut sauce. Yeah, I really like the peanut sauce. Ooh, the, the, the spiciness comes in at the end a little bit. At first I was like, it's not too spicy, but then it's there. Yeah, I guess the Dutch palate, spice-wise, might be comparable to the German one. <laughs> For the three pieces here with the baguette, it was 8.50 euros. These types of skewers you'll find all through Southeast Asia too. When we're in Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, we always find these skewers and I love it. It's one of my favorite street food snacks, just meat on a stick. So good. She likes a good meat stick. So it comes with a lot of sauce. If your uh, sticks are gone, you'll be left with a shit ton of sauce. So that's what the bread comes into play. I guess you just dip it up like that. Ooh, Look at that amount that of peanut so sauce on there. Works well too, white bread with any kind of sauce. It's pretty good. Very satisfying. All right, so that was our street food tour here from Rotterdam in the Netherlands. We're gonna head a little south 
for next week's video on Friday. And I think this was a very nice experience. I just really like the Netherlands and I like the food as well. Yeah, me too. Let us know what you would eat if you were here or what we should try next. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, I think their metro signs here look like McDonald's. Look at that, the golden arches. <laughs> oh, I'm the only one laughing. <laughs>